Oh, hey! I'm just going over some of the images I shot over the weekend using a new mono astronomy camera. It was a real eye-opener for me, and I now realize why you guys hounded me so hard about shooting with a one-shot color. The target I shot was extremely faint, and I shot it during a nearly full moon. You know what, let's just go back to Saturday and I'll tell you the full story. Hi everyone, this is Trevor from Astro Backyard. Tonight is Saturday, March 3rd, 2018. We are just one day past the full moon, but that's okay because we will be shooting in narrowband using a monochrome camera. It's actually a duo narrowband filter, which I didn't even know existed until a few weeks ago. So I've got a few things I want to show you tonight, so please join me as we photograph the Cone Nebula. blast of winter but today was clear and sunny and rather mild all day as you may know on moonlit nights backyard astrophotographers tend to stick to narrowband targets this includes shooting with filters that isolate certain types of gases HA S2 and O3 with galaxy season on its way this spring the dazzling winter targets are on their way out and quickly fading into the west, night after night. I had a decent winter, but I am not done with the amazing targets in and around Orion. Tonight I'm going to finish off what I started with the Cone Nebula. I won't get that full color image I was hoping for, but I've got an exciting new filter to capture it in hydrogen alpha and oxygen at the same time. You heard that right. I'll explain in a minute. Because I'm obsessed with photographing as much space as possible, I've also set up my old Skywatcher mount with the Mead 70mm APO attached. This is a refreshingly simple setup that includes my Canon T3i DSLR without the use of an auto guiding setup. I'll be shooting full color exposures of, you guessed it, the Orion Nebula. These are 90 second subs at ISO 1600. I can get away without auto guiding here because the exposures are relatively short. Uh, my mount is well polar aligned. The focal length of 350 millimeters is quite forgiving at f5. With my crop sensor DSLR, the Canon T3i, the field of view fits the Orion Nebula, the Running Man Nebula with lots of room to spare. I look forward to creating another portrait of this stunning area of the sky while I still can. It will also make for another great example image using the 70mm Mead. I highly recommend this telescope because it's just so painless to use. For more information you can check out my website for my full review. On the big rig I've got the Explore Scientific ED-102 with the newly installed Pegasus Astro Focus Motor. The telescope isn't new, but the camera I'm using is. The Altair 183M is a monochrome CMOS astronomy camera with a 20 megapixel Sony sensor. This is the first monochrome camera I've ever used, so you guys that gave me a hard time about shooting narrowband using a color camera can get off my back. You may remember seeing my experiences with the Altair 183C the color counterpart to this camera, and I really enjoyed using it last summer. Stay tuned for my image of the Cone Nebula at the end of this video using the 183M. See that ball of light just above my right shoulder? That's a 97% illuminated moon. So this is the uh, duo narrowband filter I was talking about, and it's from STC Optical. 48 millimeters, so two inch. I've got it uh, threaded to my field flattener. 
And this is the transmission line chart for the wavelengths that, that pass through this filter. So that's uh, hydrogen alpha there and oxygen there and nothing else. So this filter, they say it's suitable for one shot color cameras, but uh, obviously tonight I'm using it in a monochrome. So we'll see how well that uh, isolates um, those wavelengths. So here you can see the uh, two rigs set up tonight. CM60 with the Explore Scientific ED102, Skywatcher HEQ5 with the Mead 70mm quadruplet APO. It's a bit excessive, but uh, honestly it takes the pressure off. If something goes wrong on one rig, uh, I have another one to bail me out and not waste the clear skies. In total right now, I have five AC adapters plugged in. About the camera I'm using tonight on the Explore Scientific, the Altair 183M. So as I said, it's a 20 megapixel Sony sensor. It's a back illuminated sensor, built in amp glow reduction technology. So I mean, this is, a, this is an entry level monochrome CMOS camera. It's around the thousand dollar range. And the benefit, what's the benefits to a monochrome camera? For, for one thing, when you think about monochrome versus color, you think, well, who wants to see these black and white images when you could have a full color image, one shot, a one shot color camera? The problem with one shot color is it has to go through a Bayer pattern, uh, RGB, to collect, to filter the light and produce a color picture. Uh, this reduces the amount of light and the photons and the signal that comes through through your telescope and hits the camera sensor um, it comes at that cost by by producing that color image for you and going through that bear pattern a monochrome camera does not do this there's no loss of signal uh, it hits the camera sensor fills the uh, the wells and it's a it's a 100 percent signal no loss of signal so you're you're getting all the light possible uh, without sacrificing anything the only problem is you have a black and white image, so you need to shoot through color filters to produce a color image. So um, RGB filters, you could add a luminance uh, filter, so just basically light. And then of course there's isolating those narrowband wavelengths as well to, to add that to the image. So it's a lot more work. It could be four to five times the amount of time you need on a subject before you can produce a color image. And unfortunately, I don't have that kind of time because uh, the, the skies are generally pretty cloudy uh, in these parts. Um, so like tonight, I'll, be, I'll have a, just a black and white image of the cone nebula. So, uh, I mean, I'll leave it to you to decide whether you want to uh, weigh the, the goods and the bads of uh, color versus mono. Um, but for me, still a one-shot color camera is kind of what I'm leaning towards. Um, but a combination of both would be nice to shoot color and combine that with some monochrome details for, as a luminance layer. I think that might be kind of the sweet spot as opposed to, uh, you know, four times the work through, through filters. Haven't used a filter wheel before, something I want to get into. I'm sure I will in 2018. Anyways, that's my thoughts on mono versus color cameras. My DSLR combo with the 70 millimeter refractor uh, has hit the roof of the garage now and uh, Orion is pretty much done for the season. I think that might be it. Uh, so that's kind of sad, but uh, looking forward to that image and I'll definitely share that at the end of the video. The other rig is still running, although the cone nebula is uh, just kind of uh, up and to the left of Beetlejuice, so running out of time there too. Um, so this will probably be the last video that features uh, winter astrophotography targets. Uh, it was kind of a brutal winter. We had a lot of snow, really cold, but uh, I did my best to get out uh, pretty much every clear night and I'm trying to make uh, as many videos as possible for you guys. To be honest, I'm ready to move on to spring and to galaxy season and the uh, milder temperatures, even though it means uh, shorter nights. I've got an exciting new telescope to use. It's a different telescope design. It's not a refractor uh, with a much longer focal length, which is gonna come in handy for galaxy season on some of those smaller galaxies. You know what, why don't I just bring it out right now? Whoop, I lost a cap. 
it is this guy, the Ioptron Photron uh, six inch Richie Kretchen telescope. Uh, the focal length of this guy is over a thousand. I think it's more like 1500 to be honest. Uh, so this should be a lot of fun to use on some galaxies, but it will be much more demanding on the mount, my polar alignment, um, and uh, I'll definitely need to get my plate solving sorted out. Uh, you guys are all over me about the fact that I'm still using my star alignment routine. So I'll need to get that sorted out before I go this deep uh, using the, uh, the RC here, the six inch. Thank you guys so much for watching all, all your amazing comments and following along the blog. Uh, I'm just a dude in his backyard sharing his uh, experiences in deep sky astrophotography. Who knew that many people would actually enjoy watching it? Thank you to each and every one of my over 16,000 subscribers. Clear skies to you all. I hope I've inspired you to uh, do some of this as well. It's probably the funnest hobby in the world. always happens.